Don't begin this lesson until you have mastered the art of multiplying and dividing fractions. Yes, I did say multiplying and dividing fractions is an art. Just like all of math. I love math that for exactly that reason. Look, we're going to be doing problem solving here. We're going to be doing word problems with multiplying and dividing fractions. And it's important to be able to recognize the word problem that you do so you know if it's multiplication or division of fractions. We've already done the addition subtraction word problems. Be sure you've mastered those as well, the terminology. Now, look, remember for addition, words like total and sum all together, they, they refer to addition, right? Great. Subtraction had words like difference. What else? Come on, give me some more. Difference. How many more? Those are tricky ones. How many more always means subtraction. How much less? Remember the ER words like how much longer is this line compared to that line? How much taller is this person compared to the other person? Those ER words, taller, shorter, wider, stronger, all of those heavier. They all mean subtraction. Now we're going to move on to multiplication and division clues. Multiplication clues include the following. We have the word of. Yes, of is a very, very big indicator of multiplication. I'll show you where the word of would kick in to mean multiplication. Not just any word of in a sentence would refer to multiplication. It has to be used in a very specific way. Product, that always means multiplication. Times, repeated addition. If the word problem is common sense to be involving repeated addition, where the same number is added over and over again, you've got multiplication. Now, how about division? How many times greater? Look, an, an ER word. Okay, yes, but the key here is how many times. How many times greater or how many times less? The key here isn't the word greater, but how many times. Here we have how many times. If you see that, you divide the numbers. Quotient and splitting into equal groups. I should mention the word equal should fit into there. Remember these, memorize them because I'm going to be quizzing you right away. It's going to be fast and furious. So be sure you've memorized these before we move on. Here's first the first word problem. Jeff needs this many cups of Play-Doh to build. Uh, I'm not sure. Is that how you spell Play-Doh? He needs that many cups of Play-Doh to build one Play-Doh car. How much Play-Doh will Jeff need to build five cars? Notice that it doesn't include any of the clues on this page. Not one of these clues is involved in here. But yes, there is. Which one? Yes, repeated addition. Very good. If you got that, be you are like super awesome. You're still awesome if you didn't get it, but you're just way more awesome if you did get it. Look, we have this many, this much Play-Doh. We have one and three fifths to build one car. That gets him, let's say, let's say this is the car. And he needs one and three fifths to build the second car. Right? And we keep doing that five times, five cars. So we've got repeated addition. One, oops, delete that. We have one hole and three fifths plus one hole and three fifths plus one hole and three fifths. Five times. Well, how do we represent that? Well, we have five groups of them, right? We have five times one whole and three-fifths. And what did Mr. Melham say if you have a mixed fraction? Right. We convert it. Five times one plus three is eight. Eight over what? Eight over five. Multiplied by five. Now, Mr. Melham said, uh, oops, let's do that again. Eight over five. And this is going to be five. Now, remember, Mr. Melham, back in the last lesson, I said that you have to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. But does that mean that this is a zero on the bottom and so zero times five is zero? No, not at all. Look, if you don't see the number on the denominator, it's always a one. Always. Sometimes? No. Always. Always? Like always, always? Yeah, always, always. Multiply them. You're going to get 40 over five. Hey, we can divide those straight up. That's just eight. Eight what? Eight cups. Here's, second, here's the second question. We have Ty weighs this many pounds, 70 pounds and a third of a pound. His older brother, Sam, weighs 160 and a half pounds. How many times more does Sam weigh? How many times more does Sam weigh than Ty? 
Okay, what is being used here? How many times more? Great. What does that mean? Division. Always. So now let's divide those numbers. We have 70 and a third. We have always take, actually, wait, that's a mistake. We always take the big number first. If it says how many times more, how many times, you always use the big number first. Always. Sometimes? No. No. Always. We'll take 160 and a half pounds. I won't write LBS just to save space. We're going to divide it by 70 and a third. Now we have big numbers to deal with, which is fine. We're going to go two times 160. That's 320 plus one is 321 over two multiplied, right? And then we're going to flip this. But what is this? Well, this is going to be 210 plus one is 211. This is going to be 211 over three. But when we flip it, it becomes three over 211. Multiply it straight up. Okay, is it going to cooperate with me? Let's see, let's see. Please cooperate. Yes, it's going to cooperate. We multiply the numerators. We're going to have 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2. We're going to have 963. Okay, 963. The denominator will be 400. What? 400 what? 422. Right on. And then we're going to say, how many times does this go into that? And I know that it goes into it twice. Because that makes, what, 844? Yeah, these are big numbers, I understand. And from 844 to 963, how many numbers is that? Oh my gosh, okay, let's do this carefully. Add 100, we have 100. That's 944, 54, 64, plus 19 more. So we get 119 left over. 119 over 422. Um, I won't bother reducing this. I promise you the numbers you get in class are going to be much smaller, but it's not that difficult to reduce. Um, try a few numbers and see what works. Um, I'm thinking right here this might be in lowest terms, but let's say here that how many times more does Sam weigh? We still need to answer the question. How many times more? He weighs approximately two and a half times more. A pro well, actually, you know, it's closer to a two and a quarter times more because this is about one over four. If we ignore these numbers, we get about one over four. That's about two and a quarter times more, which means you need two and a quarter ties. Here's tie. Here's one tie. Here's two ties. Two and a quarter. This guy named tie, not tie tie, like a tie you wear. No, we have two. Of course, you understand what I mean. We have two ties and a quarter ties, so we'll just put... A quarter of his body, and we'll skip the legs because we just need a quarter. I'm not sure if that's a quarter, but you get the idea. This makes the same mass as one Sam. Sam's a big boy. Now we have question number three. We have Ty weighs this many pounds. His older brother, Jake, this is, I guess, the older, older brother, weighs three and a half times more than him. How much does Jake weigh? Hmm. How much does Jake weigh? What's the clue? What's the clue? Look carefully. Yes, right here. Weighs this many times more than him. Okay? A number with times right after it is always going to mean multiplication. Compare it to the last question where it said how many times more. See, there's no number before the word times. It just says how many times more. That's division. But if it says the number and then the word times after it, you've got yourself multiplication. So we multiply these two. We have 70 and a third multiplied by three and a half. Convert them into mixed fractions. We're going to get three times 70 is 210, 211 over three. And this is going to become seven over two. And you multiply... 7 over 2. You multiply the numerators. Multiply. We're going to get what? We're going to get 100. Let's see here. We're going to get 7 times 1, 7 times 1, 7 times 2. That's going to make 14, 7, 7. And the denominator is going to be 6. Okay? And then when you divide these, you're going to get your answer. Let's do long division for this. Yes, I am that cruel. 
I don't believe in calculators unless it's absolutely necessary. Look, 6 goes into 14 two times. That makes 12. Subtract. Drop this. 6 goes into 27 how many times? 4. That makes 24. Remainder 3. Drop the 7. 6 goes into 37 six times. So we're going to have 36. One left over. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to estimate this to be 246 pounds. Yes, that's right. 246 pounds. When you divide these, you're going to get about, I'll put a dot, meaning approximately, 246 pounds. That's the big brother. He's a real big boy. Here's Carmen. She made this much money selling lemonade. It's pretty good money for selling lemonade. I never made that much money ever selling lemonade. Our bake sales don't make that much money selling lemonade. She's pretty good at this. Ah, but maybe she's got some help. I think that's coming up. Her friend Sally wants two-fifths of the money because of the help that she put forth in the advertising campaign. She's a great marketer. How much money will Sally receive? What are we doing here? Multiplication, division, what's going on? You see this? Two-fifths of the money. You see the word of how it's being used? We have a number here. We have the word of, and we have a number here. We know the money is $50.32. We have two numbers, and in between them is the word of. That's when you know the word of means multiply. You see that? So let's go ahead and do it. We have 50.32. Hey, we can write that as a fraction. That's 50 holes and 32 over 100. That's right. And I'm going to multiply that by 2 over 5. Now, I'm going to reduce this to make the multiplication simpler when I convert it to an improper fraction. 32 over 100 can break down into what? It can break down into 16 over 50, which breaks down into 8 over 25, and that's the lowest term. So I'm going to write 50 holes and 8 over 35 beside it. Multiplied by 2 fifths. We're not done yet. We have to multiply this. We've got some big numbers involved here. We're going to go 50 times 35. We're going to go 5 times 0. 5 times 5. We're going to get this. We're going to get 0 and 15. That'll make 0, 5, 7, 1. That's 1750 plus 8 would make 1758. So we're going to get 1758 over 35 multiplied by what? 2 over 5. Now we've got some more multiplication to do. We do this, we're going to get 1758 multiplied by 2. Put the 2 down here. You're going to get 16, 11, 15, 3. 3, 5, 1, 6. And then the denominator is going to be 35 and 5. So quickly multiply that. We're going to get 25. We're going to get 15, 16, 17, 175. And when you divide these two numbers, out of nowhere, this calculator just shows up. I'm going to do the, the division here. I'm going to go 3, 5, 1, 6. We're going to divide that by 175. <laughs> I can do that. I could divide these on a calculator. Why am I wasting all my time doing this? I'm going to get $20.09. I'm going to pop that answer out. Here it is. I'm going to rewrite it so we can see it better. I'm going to make it like this. She gets $20. That's this part here. $20.09. We've got one more to go. Jen had the jelly beans that weighed this many kilograms. And if she wanted to split those jelly beans into five equal groups, what would the mass be of each group? This is going to be what? Division, right? Because she's splitting jelly beans into equal groups. So we're going to write six and two thirds. We're going to do division by five. Then we're going to remember the rule for division of fractions. We're going to flip this and we're going to flip these ones here. Remember, if you don't see it, it's on the bottom. It's a one. If you don't see the denominator, it's a one. So we flip it, we get that. We're going to convert this into 20 over three. Multiply it. 20 over 15. Reduce it. What goes into both? Right, 5. So we'll go divide by 5 and divide by 5. 
and we get what? We get 4 over 3, which is 1 and a third. 1 and a third kilograms per group. 